Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. In this month of suffer related to the Jalli of Hayba. Yeah, everything crooked becomes straight. When Allah is going to dress His creation and His servants with the majestic light, means it doesn't come jamali. Jamal, you feel everything is beautific, everything okay. Jalali, it straightens everything. So if we're doing things that are a little bit off and, and not what uh, is at the best of what Allah is wanting from us, then things can be a little bit intense where you feel it becomes like you, things are straightening. Every type of difficulty is a rahmah from Allah So if a mosquito bites you, it's not something random. You thought, why I got bitten? Allah took something of a difficulty away. So that's the understanding of majestic light. Majestic light, it comes and dresses you with something and it takes away your difficulty so that Allah can make an exchange. This negative light that we carry, when Allah wants to send the haybah and majestic oceans of power, it will come and replace the negativity and that can lead to a little bit of hardship, some types of difficulties. And alhamdulillah that can be lessened by daily sadaqah, the awrads and the zikrs, all of that is on the Muhammadan way up. Do good deeds in this month, make lots of salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad And all these practices and all these teachings lessen all of the misunderstanding. That by doing these practices then we can begin to feel, you fin feel an immense heat in the zikr and in the salawats. That Allah is going to send a, a heated light upon the souls to begin to open on earth what needs to be opened for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi inshaAllah. Energy question. Yeah. Uh, as Sayyidi. Um, do we have permission to recite Surah Fatiha as ruqya and to receive compensation for this? Can you please clarify the reality of Reiki and other energy healing modalities? Alaykum mm -hmm. As Salaam wa We have on the website the hadith of the Sahabi who were traveling, somebody had been bitten by something and they did ruqya which is a healing on somebody by reciting and Sayyidina Muhammad said, you have every permission to charge for the healing. So that to be compensated for your effort and for your work, that's nothing wrong with that. Now if you've been granted a permission to do healing that's one thing but you don't want to enter into the oceans of trying to heal people when we haven't healed ourselves and get an ijazah. Energy is something that bounces off. So if we just visualize to make everything simple for the audience is if you, you have a positive feeling one day and somebody's got 10 negative feelings on them. As soon as you go to do healing on them and you're not trained, you basically took the 10 negative from them and went away with 10 negative feelings. They go away happy maybe and you know, feel light, this is great, I don't know you were, that was really nice, I spent time with you. But you go away with the negativity. Now if you've been trained by the shaykh or the shaykh himself, he's been trained on how to process the energy and he's been trained on what to do, what not to do, how to, to convey the, the fires, how not to, to sort of touch so that that energy is a direct conveyance upon his own energy. So there's many different trainings. Without doing that many healers become sick because they're just playing out there in this new age world of trying to heal. And then they become sick, they become uh, filled with negative energies and this energies. If somebody has mental difficulties, the healer can often pick up all of the depression and the sadness and they'll all of a sudden enter into an ocean of depression and they don't understand that this was theirs or this was the person that they were dealing with. It's very difficult and very dangerous at this time especially with this sickness and this COVID and all these different things that humanity is trying to throw upon people would uh, be, be cautious about. What was the second part of the question? And then, um, can you please clarify the reality of Reiki and other energy healing modalities? Yeah, we don't care for them. So we, we, we're 
trying to stay, it's like a, it's like a beautific dish from paradise given by Sayyidina Muhammad And why would you want to throw things from other dishes onto that? Then it become like a kalipache, become like a smorgasbord of you don't know what's in this pot. I mixed a little bit of this, I mixed a little bit of that. So all of those things we don't believe them to be to the caliber of what Sayyidina Muhammad is authorizing and opening. When you stay committed and we'll get into that for tomorrow for Surat Al-Kaf is when you're loyal and committed and say, this is I want the Muhammadan reality, I will struggle to reach the Muhammadan reality, then I don't throw any contaminants into that formula at all because you're going to have to sanctify, you're going to have to purify, you're going to have to calibrate yourself to get permission from Sayyidina Muhammad so that becomes something very pure. You wouldn't dare take into that pure thing and now throw somebody else's lesser understandings into that. Then you just contaminate the whole thing and then Prophet is, is not pleased with you mixing things together inshaAllah. <coughs> so there's their own inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Nurjan. Mm, can I ask about the benefits of reading Dilalul Khairat daily? And is it okay to read it in English so I can understand what I'm saying? Thank you. Walaykum as wa rahmatullah. Ya Dalai Khirat is an immense ocean and Imam Jayzuli was not the one who authored it. So when we teach about Malakut, he was the one whom given the blessings of allowing it to come onto earth. Allah granted him the ni'mat of giving it through him to bring it onto earth. But this is Allah's ancient oceans of power. That ocean of power that is moving was we call the Muhammad, is the ocean of Sayyidina Muhammad's power oceans that are moving that obliterate everything and bring everything into the oneness of Allah that's Dalai Khirat. That power when they enter into that ocean they hear that like a humming, that's that power is Dalai Khirat, is being recited by purified souls of awliya, of sahabi, of angels. That's the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and the ocean of power that obliterates, we call Muhammad. The Muhammad it obliterates everything, mahi, it crush everything so that it enters pure into Allah's presence. So Dalal Khira has immense blessing. Imam Jayzuli, Imam Jayzuli was granted the honour to bring it onto this earth but definitely is not the source of it. The source is an ancient ocean of Allah So reciting daily then imagine its immensity. One, you're mimicking the reality of the ocean of power so then your soul is now sort of synchronizing with that ocean of power that your immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad begin to grow because you're reciting something that can't be understood on this earth. You're reciting and reciting your soul is now becoming energized. As a result of your soul becoming energized you begin to fight off every type of badness. So why do you have bad desires? Why do you have affliction to all sorts of haram and all of these different things? It's because the desire is stronger than your ability for your soul to fight it. So in the formula of the energy, the negative is stronger on you than the positive. So how do you combat negative desires? Increase your positive. When your positive is so positively charged it repels everything negative. Until you again let it come in by food, by drink, by people, all of the negativity comes and all of a sudden their desire, their energy comes into you and you go back to the bad habit. But Dalal Khirat has immense power to fight off all of those desires and, and difficulties and then make the soul to glow with the Muhammadan love inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Sayyidi oh, Everybody woke up? <laughs> Uncle Sayyidi Jumma Mubarak. Jumma Mubarak. Sometimes one feel, one soul feels very restless. Why does this happen? I really need your guidance, Sayyidi. 
Yeah, this is the… the we've talked before about depression and anxiety and why depression and anxiety is so prevalent upon the earth. Because the soul has a coordinates, it's getting an understanding every night, every moment it's in a Wi-Fi with Divinely Presence, every moment. So the greater soul that's always in Allah's presence and the lesser, lesser consciousness that Allah gave as a drop into your physicality, He didn't give you the whole gift to go out and destroy it. He just gave you one drop of the light into your body. Your greater reality is continuously trying to talk to you. You know that we promised Allah this, you know we were supposed to do this, you know we're supposed to do this. Well if somebody keep telling you all day long you're supposed to be doing something and you're not doing it, what are you going to become? Anxious and then when you know you're not doing it because this is deep from the soul you're going to become depressed. Anxious that I know something's about to happen, I know I was supposed to do something, I'm supposed to be building myself, uh, there's like a slaughter field coming and I'm not doing nothing. So of course you're going to be anxious and then depressed and that's why then the zikr, the practices, the meditation, the salawats, all of these illuminate the soul, give it more power, give it more energy to push away negative. When you push away the negative now you can begin to feel the inspiration within the heart coming. When the inspiration comes you feel like, oh I did everything, I packed everything, I, I did everything I, I believe I was supposed to. And then that becomes your, your internal compass in life is that you know you, you have a responsibility. You can't just sit at home and say, I'm not going to do the responsibility. Of course you're going to get depressed, you're going to get nervous and if they love you, you're going to have a lot of problems. You can't just sit and not do it. So you have to you know finish what you committed to and that becomes then the stations of Rijalullah in their training. They understood, they have commitments, they have responsibilities and they have to do those. And the commitments of the heavens far outweigh the commitment of dunya, it's not even any comparison. Um, Sayyidi, how to control ourselves when we got heartbreak with anyone? Yeah, to control yourself, I think it's more of a a lesson for us that we, we've talked before that people try to make the, the love relationship amongst people. And because they don't understand the relationship with Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad so I meet XYZ and I say, I'm going to put all my love in you and you're going to put all your love in me and I'm going to change you to be something that I want and you're going to change me to be something you want and none of that's going to happen because you don't change anyone on earth. Shaykhs can't change anyone, nobody changes anyone, Allah you know to guide one person like moving a mountain. You can move a mountain easier than to guide somebody and change them. So when on… on or unrealistic expectations among people. What they should have done in life is that I have to love Allah first and my love is for the Divine, my love is for Sayyidina Muhammad and I commit my heart to the love of Allah and His Rasul and my faith. When my love is correct and I calibrated my heart with that which is eternal and that which never lets me down, the love between me and you is in the jigar. So we have expressions, jigar it biram, right? My liver for you. And why they teach those things? And they never use heart in the talk of love. They don't say, my qalb is for you. Because this is a shirk with Allah their heart is for Allah They say, sinam, my chest is for you. Well that can be very broad, anything in my chest is for you hmm. but my heart for Allah So they were teaching on how they talk and how their, their, the, 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 the grammar of what they would use. Everything now became the heart, oh my heart for you, your heart for me and then you're putting the wrong love inside that heart. And Allah will make it then to be broken to show you nobody should be in there except me. Everybody else will sell you. They sold Sayyidina Isa 
for a bag of coins. So at any point in your life somebody will sell you, finish with you for less than a bag. So if you do what you do for people you will become greatly disappointed. But if you do what you do for Allah you don't care how many times they sell you because you did it for Allah and Allah gave you the, re the reward. So tariqah comes and teaches real love and a love that's eternal because whatever you give your heart to you're going to be locked for eternity to that, that, that person, place or thing and that's dangerous to put your heart onto something that is, uh, is not going to be of any benefit for you for eternity. But if you lock your heart onto that which is eternal and that which has immense blessings then you should be successful here and hereafter inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.